If you're looking for a cost-effective way to build brand awareness or maybe promote a product that nobody has heard about yet, you may want to look into video reach campaigns. This is a campaign type that really tries to focus on getting in front of the most unique users as possible. In this video, we're going to cover when you may want to use a video reach campaign. We'll look primarily at the campaign setup, a specific section that really focuses on the campaign goal. It's going to be determined on which video creative you have and which option is the best one for you. And then we'll look at the specific columns within Google Ads that can help you measure the performance of your video reach campaigns. Before we jump into the video reach campaign creation within Google Ads, I first want to discuss when you may want to create a video reach campaign because it is a very specific subtype of a campaign within Google Ads. To me, the biggest reason is if your main focus is to try and build as much awareness as you can with whatever budget you have. It's called a reach campaign. If you're really focused on driving conversions, trying to get as much revenue as possible from your video campaigns, this is the wrong type for you. You would want to look at creating a video action campaign. And we already have a video on that, and you can check that one out here. We're going to see within the campaign setup that certain settings focus on trying to reach as many unique users as possible. So again, we're here to try to build awareness. So this may be more beneficial if you were a newer company out there and no one knows your brand name or potentially you are already an established brand, but you could be launching a new product or service that nobody knows about. They're not searching for it on Google. So you have to do something to build the awareness. So this could be a more cost effective way to try and reach as many of your target audience that you would like to. The second reason is that this campaign type allows you to combine several ad formats. So you can test out this message and still try to maximize the unique reach without having to split your budget in several ways. And the third reason that you may want to use a video reach campaign is if you want to make sure that all the new users who are seeing your ads watch the entire message. While you are setting up the campaign, there will be an option to include skippable ads. However, if you want to get the new users who are seeing your ads to hopefully pay a little bit more attention or to make sure that your brand message sticks, the main benefit of this campaign will be using the non-skippable ad format. And we'll cover what those are within the video. Okay, so let's hop in to Google Ads so we can walk through all the steps needed to create your video reach campaign. I'm in the main overview page of Google Ads. Whether you're here or on the campaigns tab, we will just need to create a new campaign. Next, we will have to choose our campaign objectives. I said earlier in the video that a video reach campaign is a subtype of one of these objectives. So the clear objective we will need will be a brand awareness and reach objective. Once we did that, we can select our campaign type. Pretty clear that we need video. And the first option, which is already selected for us, is the video reach campaign. And since that's already selected, we can look to the next section at the bottom of the screen. That's where we see a unique setting option available for this subtype. The default option is efficient reach, and this is the option that lets you include the skippable in-stream ads, bumper ads, or a combination of both. They say it's going to cost lower due to the fact of how skippable in-stream ads work. With the skippable in-stream ad, you only pay if the user watches at least 30 seconds, or if the video is under 30 seconds, that the user watches the entire video ad. So there is opportunity here to stretch out your budget a little bit more. But maybe you don't want users to reach your ad. You want to make sure the entire message of that ad gets across. You do have the option to choose non-skippable in-stream only. So here, you would only get to use the 15-second non-skippable version of the in-stream ad. So you may be forced to use one setting just due to the creative that you have. Just depends on your goals and what you want the user to experience when they're interacting with your brand potentially for the first time. I'm just going to continue to use efficient reach and then we can move on. First, you can update the name of your campaign if you like. I'm going to leave it as is. But next, I want to make sure we're focusing on the bid strategy. As I expand that, we can see that I cannot change the bid strategy. The only option is target CPM or cost by 1000 impressions which makes sense because we're not focusing on specific conversion actions. So any target CPA or max conversion bid strategy doesn't make sense for this particular objective. Again, go back to your video action campaigns if that really is your main goal. We scroll down a little bit and I just entered in my budget. Since I do have a campaign total budget, I'm forced to have an end date, but you do have the option to go over, choose daily, and then you're not forced to use an end date. Looking under the specific networks, we see that we cannot add YouTube search results. That is only going to be available for in-feed ads, but as we saw as we chose efficient reach, we can only use bumper ads and the skippable in-stream ads, so the YouTube search results is not an option. You don't want that anyway if your goal is reach. 
but you can uncheck video partners. This will keep your ads just on YouTube. If you do have a smaller budget, I do recommend unchecking video partners. Once you start scaling your YouTube campaigns or you want to add additional reach later, you can always go back into your campaign settings and check the box again. But at least I know I'm keeping the users on YouTube and have a better understanding of where they're watching my ads. Keep going down, there's location, there's language, there's your content exclusions. One unique part about a brand awareness or reach campaign is that you can add related video extensions. Click on related videos, then you can start adding additional YouTube videos. I know it is a CPM strategy, but collectively you kind of are paying for the video view every time. But underneath your video ad, you can see in the example off to the right, a user can potentially watch other videos that you may have on your YouTube channel or you just want the user to engage with. It's one way to stretch the dollar out. I'm not gonna cover related videos too much because we already have a video going over related video extensions and you can check that one out here. Then I'm gonna open up additional settings. And the only one I really wanna call out is frequency capping. While this is optional, it could be pretty important for this particular campaign objective because we are trying to focus on reaching unique users. And if we're trying to reach unique users, you may not want users to continually see your video ads because it is still possible. Google's not gonna show your ad just once to one person. While it's gonna try to get as much unique users as possible, there will be some duplication. So your two options would be to either cap the impression frequency or the view frequency. And yes, someone could start seeing your video ad, but if they don't watch it long enough, it's not counted towards a view, it'd be just an impression. I talk about this a little bit more in the video I created on frequency capping, so if you want to know the differences between the two, you can watch that one here. In that video though, I do cover display frequency capping as well, but video is also a good portion of it. All right, if your settings are all good, then you can go down to look at creating your ad group. Update your ad group name, choose whatever targeting options you want, but I do want to drop down to where we can go and look at our video ads. So let me just find a commercial on YouTube. I just pulled a random commercial. Now we don't work for Lay's. So we can see in the ad preview under the skip ad button, it is a one minute ad. So it's still gonna work for the skippable in-stream ad format. It even says right above the mobile preview, skippable in-stream ad. That is the URL for when I wanna add my call to action extension. So while unique users and reach is still the main objective, we do have the option to send users to the website. There, there's some pretty basic examples. So that is one ad here. If I drop down towards ad creation, I'll have the option to add another video creative right within the setup. And then I just searched bumper ads on YouTube. Found this one about action figures. There's a URL. Yes, I could add a call to action extension, but I just want to keep moving. But if you look above the ad preview, there's an example of a bumper ad. I could even switch up to desktop and there we see six seconds. So there we have our two ad variants. Next, we can set our target CPM bid for this ad group, and then we can create the campaign. Just for the sake of this video, I hop back in, create another campaign, went through all the same steps, except for choosing how you would like to reach your goal. So here's an example of the non-skippable in-stream one. It's pretty much the same. You see it's 15 second ad right there. Here's an example of your non-skippable in-stream ad. I would add the URL, my call to action information, and then save it. I just wanted to call it out because within Google Ads, you can change your campaign objectives for a search campaign. You cannot change the campaign objective for a video campaign. And those reach goals of a video reach campaign, I'm talking about the efficient reach versus non-skippable in-stream, those can't be changed after you launch a campaign. So if you do wanna test both of them out, you will need two separate campaigns, which means two separate budgets. But after you've launched the campaign, it's been running for a little bit, you're collecting your metrics and your stats, let me show you a few columns I like to review when I'm really focusing on awareness and reach. This is the Paid Media Pros account. We don't do any advertising, we just have it for the sake of making these videos. But there are a variety of ways that you can modify and create custom columns for your reporting. Google does make this easy. If you go to the column section, you may see that there already is an option for reach metrics. Here's where you can look at the amount of unique users the campaign is getting. Pretty much the primary objective of a video reach campaign. Overall impressions right now is way off to the right, but in between, we see average impression frequency per user, average impression frequency per user over the past seven days. There is a 30 day option that you can just go up within your columns, modify, and if we go down to reach metrics, there's a 30 day option. You're gonna see it in the frequency cap video, but we can see here it's clearly just for video. I'm gonna cancel out now, and there's the frequency distribution. So if the goal is unique users, but maybe you're seeing users are seeing the ad more than five times, or even more than 10 times, that allow you to go back into the campaign settings. It is under the additional settings portion at the bottom, but then adjust your frequency capping. 
As I mentioned earlier, we can go up and modify these columns. So besides the main reach metrics, maybe you still want to go up and see how long users are watching it. And this is going to be primarily for the efficient reach selection. This is the option that is using a skippable in-stream ad. Maybe you want to see how long people are watching per impression. And what was the bid strategy for this campaign? Target CPM. So maybe you want to keep an eye on that one as well. Other ones to consider will be the YouTube earned actions. After seeing your video ad, are people going on to watch other videos, like other videos? We do have another video about the earned actions and the benefits of monitoring them for any YouTube campaign. You can watch that video here. And maybe you want to look at some of the non-direct conversion actions. Yes, we can always view our conversions, but maybe you want to look at something like a view through conversion. If users are seeing the ad and convert later on, is it having an impact on the user's decision? Or maybe your cross device conversion actions. They see the video ad on one device, later convert on a different device. We are not expecting that conversion action to take place by a first touch point. And while I don't have any within this account, one thing I really like to keep in mind from a video reach campaign is going to be exclusion audiences. So if we head into audiences, any specific audience segments that you're targeting will be here. But if we go down, we'll have exclusions. And you'll be able to edit those however you have them set up at the ad group or campaign level. It all depends on how you've structured your campaigns. So if this is purely new awareness, I'm trying to reach a brand new audience and as many users as possible, this is where I'm going to add as many remarketing audiences as I can to my exclusion list. But I also gave the scenario in the very beginning of this video of maybe you already are an established brand, you're just trying to promote a new product. Well, that's when maybe something like customer match would make sense for your actual audience targets. People who are already dedicated customers for your brand, maybe they're the best ones who would want to buy your new product or sign up for your new service. Then you can potentially target that list if it is large enough, and then you're probably going to be a little bit more lenient on the frequency because they're people who are already familiar with you. Those are just two very basic scenarios, and completely understand the strategy can change depending on who you're trying to reach, what the campaign goals are, so many other factors. And that is the setup of a video reach campaign within Google Ads. Pretty much the main difference is going to be if you want to choose an efficient reach goal or use a non-skippable format when creating your ads for your specific ad group. If there are any questions on the setup or you just want to make a comment on the performance you're seeing from this particular objective and subtype, let everyone know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.